Well, thank you, Jahila, and you mentioned so aptly um, our, our standing in the, in the country and the world as being a number one destination for tourism. And, and although I think that's a good thing for our local economy, my vision is to make Charleston the number one place for, uh, to live in, a livable city. And, and so that's my goal. In terms of um, local development, uh, there are a number of things that we need to do to, to have balance between the growth that is upon us already. I mean, there are 42 people a day moving to our region. And, um, you know, we've only got so much land and so much, we've got to plan smartly how we grow. Uh, particularly on the peninsula of Charleston, there are a number of things that I plan to do as mayor uh, short term, right away. And one of them is to make sure that we're in sync with our Century 5 uh, plan that the city has adopted. And we've seen a recent example like the Sergeant Jasper where local zoning and height ordinance is not in sync with, with the Century 5 plan. So one of the first order of business is to take a hard look at our Century 5 plan and make sure that our zoning and height districts, you know, are, uh, are together with that plan. Regarding the height districts particularly, I do like the idea that was proposed recently by architect Delaney um, that you base it more on the number of floors than the, the number of feet. I think that would provide some diversity if you had a three-story building that may not be the same height exactly as the three-story building that, that's next door to it. So I think that's a good idea. I also think it's a good idea to um, reform the, the Board of Architectural Review and have certain districts that are more important than others. For example, now the, the whole historic area that, that the BAR has jurisdiction over is nearly 3,000 acres. And really, not all of that 3,000 acres is as historic as other areas. So, for example, if you took below Calhoun Street and made that the most sensitive area and restrict that to more classical uh, architecture, you never would have had the, the controversy that arose from the Clemson building that was proposed at uh, George and Meeting Street, which was catty corner to the beautiful building, the Washington Light Infantry, I mean, it, it baffled me that that worked. So um, if you had that kind of special designation for certain areas, um, I think that would help us. Um, but the most important thing is getting the density, which is the zoning, in sync with what we want to see. That's the short term. <laughs> Um, in addition, I would add that um, when we have a large project uh, like the Sergeant Jasper, uh, I know the city tries to facilitate, I, I would not use the word force, but strongly encourage, facilitate um, our Civic Design Center to collaborate with the developer, with neighborhood and historic groups so that some consensus about a development plan is in place before it goes through the official process. And, and my style as mayor will be collaborative, getting people together, and try to uh, avoid going to court, solving things before they become problems. Long term, you gotta look at um, zoning as well, and our urban growth boundary. I mean, that's an important distinction of long term growth. I think uh, most of the city of Charleston is within the urban growth boundary, and so our zoning is so important. Um, future growth outside that boundary is going to be a more regional issue than city of Charleston. Well, outside of the peninsula area, particularly West Ashley, we, we actually need some development. And, and I call what we need there strategic economic development, and it's probably more so on the commercial side than residential. Uh, Avondale, for example, is a great neighborhood commercial center that works. You've got a variety of shopping and nightlife and people that live in the area can now walk, um, you know, to, to shopping and, and services. Um, 
So I would like to see us concentrate three, four different similar areas, um, or two or three along Sam Rittenberg and, and develop the, the West Ashley Circle. So you have these neighborhood centers for uh, shopping and services that will reduce um, travel time. Nearby neighborhoods will be able to more completely um, you know, conduct business near to where they live. And so that's the kind of strategic development that I would like to see happen West Ashley. Um, we have, of course, the, the um, design review board that the city has set up uh, on major corridors to review uh, those projects. But again, on bigger projects, I would um, encourage developers to use our Civic Design Center and kind of use that as a facilitator to make sure we're collaborating with uh, neighborhoods and, and local residents. Well, I, I support high, higher density development where, where the zoning has been approved in sync with, with our plan. Um, again, the Sergeant Jasper was an example where the density I don't think was appropriate for the historic district and for the surrounding neighborhoods. Um, the neck area uh, of the peninsula is, in my opinion, a, a area that's a appropriate for higher density than what we have in the hist historic district, um, part of which is still under BAR jurisdiction. So that begs the question that I mentioned about reforming the BAR. Um, there's certainly some scattered site um, fill, infill opportunities, West Ashley, um, that, that might be candidates for, for extra density as well. Um, but I don't have any specific sites in mind. Well, I'd be very active, uh, particularly on, on the larger projects. Um, and, and, you know, we have our protocol already in place with requirements for BAR and building permits and all like that. So, so the legal um, permitting process is, is in place. Not, not to say you can't modify the BAR uh, as I described previously, um, but I don't want to force another layer on a, on a development process that, that's already complicated enough in my opinion. In fact, that's another side of the story that for developments that meet the requirements and, and and no controversy, I want to try to reduce some of the red tape and allow uh, the development process to go forth a little more smoothly, particularly when the city gets backed up as it is now with a lot of projects. We could do things like um, hire out for an extra fee uh, expedited uh, plan review by, by qualified you know, technical experts, but you know, sometimes the city just gets backed up and we need to think about how we're doing business when things are, you know, appropriate and approved. You know, let's, let's move them on through the process and get the business done. You know, it's already a uh, train out of the station maybe because the city and the medical university and a private developer already have an agreement to move forward and I think three different projects have already been proposed to the BAR. So um, I'm not sure that that agreement could be unwound at this point, to be honest with you. I, I like the concept of in that location, have a little more density, promoting the biotechnical uh, business aspect, I think is terrific. I mean, when I looked at the plans a couple of months ago, um, I did question whether it was almost a little too much, a little too dense. Um, and, and maybe as this um, uh, resolution to this drainage uh, creek uh, wetlands situation gets revolved, it might, depending on how that goes, reduce the overall density just a little bit, which um, would be okay.